You know, sometimes when you dispose of these false pastors, these wolves in sheep's clothing, they have a way sometimes of making their way back in to another church, kind of like a, you know, a cockroach. You know, use the bug spray and everything like that to try and get rid of them. But over time, the spray wears off, right? Washes away and the cockroaches, they, they come back. And what they do is they creep into other churches that, you know, are taking advantage of people that may have no idea what they did. And I've often said that the churches, the pastors of these churches that allow them in to preach, they're just as bad. They're just as bad because they know what they've done. They're all good buddies, right? They bring them in and, you know, don't tell the congregation anything about their past. And maybe, just maybe, this is not somebody that you want to have your family around. But I mean, truth and transparency be darned, right? It's not about that. And then what they do is they preach messages, specific messages that are geared around their present situation. It's actually the perfect gaslighting. If somebody did happen to hear something about the pastor, well, they preach a message that will quickly dispel everything that you may be thinking about them. Wait a minute. I mean, didn't I hear of this guy before? Didn't he get fired from that one church? Didn't he have to resign because of some sort of a moral issue? Then the pastor comes in and, well, he puts all that to bed, right? Didn't do anything like that at all. See, I'm on to the games. I know that many of you are as well. There's quite a few out there, though, that still worship these pastors, and they get mad at me, they yell at me, and they, oh, it's just gossip. It's not true. It's just the enemy trying to come in and rip apart the church. Uh, you don't understand the difference between what the enemy is doing and, well, the wolves that he works through. People have a very hard time wrapping their wrapping their heads around the fact that maybe these people aren't actually who they say they are. They wore a title, so it somehow makes them legit. The people worship the pastor. They don't worship God. No, because if somebody wears the title of pastor, you have to 100% trust them everything that they say. And if you don't trust them, then you're the problem, right? You're the gossiper. You're the one that's causing division amongst the church and its people. God doesn't want division. They guilt you. They shame you. It may not be popular, but I'm going to keep calling it out. Now, one of these disgraced pastors of multiple mega churches has resurfaced, but it's not the first time that he's resurfaced. And well, questions surrounding his involvement now with this new church in South Carolina. Is he on staff? Are they trying to hide the fact that he may be on staff? What was it that he recently preached? What about lawsuits? We'll get into all of that and much more in just a second. But before we do, I want to welcome all of you to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only options. If you guys could, I need you to do me a big favor. Hit the like button for me. Share this video around when you do that. You help to get these videos out there more in the algorithm and the recommended section. Gets more eyes on our content that way. And I need to request another huge favor from you. Would you consider making a generous donation to support and fund this ministry, not by Sight News? In light of my wife's recent health challenges, suffering a stroke, on top of that, she was diagnosed with a clotting disorder, and even more recently, a lupus diagnosis, which explained to us why she had been in such debilitating pain, and now it's caused her to no longer be able to work. And well... Not having her salary has really put us in a hole right now in a bind. It's all on me right now, and I will say that ad revenue enough, uh, or ad revenue alone is not enough. It's not sustainable enough for me to be able to continue here at Not By Sight News. You know, with all the bills that are stacking up on us, medical bills and other bills and just basic internet, uh, we need you guys right now more than ever to help fund this ministry. If you believe in my work and what I do, exposing church corruption, these wolves, if you think it's important, help to keep us going. Here's how you can help. There's multiple ways. One is by visiting our GoFundMe, 
We created a GoFundMe. The link to that is in the description of this video and all videos. And we thank all of you who have been contributing to that. You've been a tremendous blessing. Also, you could become monthly contributors by joining our Patreon for as little as five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash not by site news. That link in the description. And also, finally, you can hit the super thanks button on the YT video. Although I will tell you, if you choose that option, that YT will take 30% of that for themselves. So if you want to make sure that we get the majority of your generous gift, then GoFundMe or Patreon will be your best options. And we, again, thank you all so much for your support. In a recent sermon at Forward City Church in Columbia, South Carolina, this is a mega church out there. It was founded by Travis Green. Travis is an award-nominated, Grammy Award-nominated artist, singer, and his wife, Jackie Green. Now, they brought in, during the church's recent College Week service, a man who has been called disgraced now for multiple years, going all the way back to 2019. None other than Pastor Mikan Carter. What is the history of this man? We're going to get into it. And also what he preached at the recent service there at Forward City. But before I even do that, I got to give you the background on this guy. It's important for people to know. Again, I know not everybody wants to hear this. This ain't popular. And, you know, I've said before, viewership here at Not By, not by Sight News is way down. Okay, we're losing people all the time. And it couldn't come at a worse time for us, especially, again, with my wife's health issues and everything else that we have going on. But this information helps to warn believers about what churches to stay away from and which pastors to avoid. So Carter was the former pastor of Together Church in Washington State, big mega church out there. In 2019, there was an altercation between Carter and his then secretary, Mary Jones. Mary Jones alleges that Carter mistreated her in her office and it was not something that she wanted, okay? Now, you have Jones who has wrote, you know, multiple blogs about this horrible incident that took place to her and how even to this day, she still has not been able to get over it. She looked at Carter as a spiritual father. This is something that you often see in these cases of mistreatment. You know, you have the pastor that, you know, tries to say he's a father figure and then he takes complete advantage of uh, the woman or the victim. And of course, when I say mistreat, I mean, I'm talking about he, he did everything uh, to her, even when she said no. Now, Carter has said that this is not the case, that in fact, well, Jones participated in it. It was something that she wanted, and Carter has called it an affair. It was wrong, he said, but it was an affair. It wasn't anything that, you know, it wasn't like she wasn't wanting it. Nevertheless, it led to Carter's resignation from Together Church, and that church eventually ended up disbanding, and then it broke off into uh, several other congregations after it was all said and done. But again, this is in 2019. In 2020, just a year later, Carter resurfaced in Alabama at none other than Church of the Highlands, which is led by Chris Hodges, who I've talked about multiple times. Of course, Chris Hodges heads up the ARC, the Association of Related Churches. They got all these church plants around the country, and they are notorious for these types of situations breaking out with these disgraced pastors. But Hodges made it his personal mission to restore Mekon Carter. Carter wants to, or I should say, Hodges wants to restore everybody. They built that $4.4 million restoration retreatment center for all of these fallen pastors. That's what Chris Hodges is heading up. And I've said this before. I've criticized this, you know, time and time again. It's nothing more than this luxurious vacation spot for these pastors to go. And the fact that you have so many of them that need to be restored should kind of tell you something about who they are in the first place. You shouldn't have to even have something like this. But what 
moral failure after moral failure, as I always like to say. These pastors obviously have an issue if they can't control themselves. But no, people just, they, they turn a blind eye to it, bury their head in the sand. And, oh, we just trust the We all sin and fall short of the glory. They're so good at twisting these scriptures around. He who be would not sin if you the first arm, blah, blah, blah. Again, wolves operate differently. People that sin have to show a sign of true, genuine repentance. But what they do is they just go back to the same patterns, back to the same behavior over and over again. They are not of God. They are not Christ-like. They do not bear the fruit that you would think somebody who is a believer would be. So what happened here? After this restoration project of Mekon Carter from Chris Hodges, you had Mary Jones reach out to Hodges right before she was getting ready to go public with her story. Informed Hodges about what happened. And Mekon Carter was then gone from Church of the Highlands. Church number two, gone. But remember, Hodges knew, knew already about what Carter had done at the church in Washington with Mary Jones, yet he still made it his personal mission to restore this man until he was confronted by Mary Jones. And she told him about the serious nature of what took place to her at the hands of this man. This is not somebody who's to be restored. To be restored, you got to be somebody that was actually walking with Christ to begin with. So, Carter was then gone, but he did resurface again a couple of years later in 2022 at a church in California. So he's been popping up again, like I said about the cockroaches, right? You, you, you stomp them out, use the bug spray, they run away at first, and they eventually they end up coming back once it's all washed away. By the way, Carter has filed multiple lawsuits against Mary Jones for defaming him by accusing him of doing something that he didn't do. Now, one of those lawsuits was reportedly dismissed. However, there is a second civil suit that is now pending in Washington state here against uh, Mary Jones. Again, Carter's saying that he didn't do these things that he's being accused of. Mary Jones is maintaining her position in this. The fact that yes, he did. Pastors have tried to cover for him. Again, using his position as clergy to, you know, gain favors and all of that. And you have to understand that in 13 states right now, and unfortunately Alabama and Washington state are not two of those states, but if there is any sort of clergy mistreatment going on, they look at that as a serious offense and a crime. So they can say that, well, even if it was agreed upon, even if she was like, no, she did want it. She wanted the relationship. She wanted the interaction, if you know what I mean. Well, it wouldn't be considered criminal in those states. But what she's alleging is something completely different. Again, mistreatment that she didn't ask for. Big difference. So with these lawsuits now still out there, enter Forward City Church, as I said here at the top. And you have Mekon Carter, that appeared at the most recent sermon for them, it was at the end of October, for their college week. And again, he was brought in by Travis and Jackie Green. And what did Carter preach at the church? He was talking about pastors who are disqualified by saying, who are you to say that the Lord can't use them? about how quick we are to just discard these pastors when you don't know what God has in store for them. Isn't it always interesting, as I said, how the theme of these messages are always geared towards what they are being accused of. He wouldn't preach a message on anything. He's not preaching a message on, he sure as heck ain't going to be preaching no message on repentance, right? Or sin or any of that. No, 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 no. It's always about, Again, the pastor, oh, don't say I'm, you know, this well. And he didn't necessarily gear this toward himself, but he was alluding to himself because, again, he knows what's out there. He knows there's some people out there that will actually keep up with what's going on in churches. And this is how you manipulate the sheep, right? You lull them into his false sense of security and then you pounce on them. 
Again, what is Green thinking, allowing a man like this into his church, who again is being credibly accused of mistreating his former secretary, knowing that this is somebody that obviously couldn't control himself in what he was doing, right? Was it an affair? Yeah, it was. I wouldn't even call it a fair game because it wasn't something that she agreed upon. No, these are sick demonic actions. And churches continue to platform these, these people. Because again, they're friends, right? They're buddies. They protect each other. Now, Lord City Church was reached for comment and they were asked, is Carter on your staff? Didn't respond. What was interesting though, is that if you go to Forward City Church's Facebook page, okay, that same day that Carter preached at the end of October, they said this about Carter. They, they called him our very own pastor. Mekon Carter will be speaking during college week. Our very, our very own. That kind of sounds to me like he's on the staff there at Forward City. But again, they don't want to respond for comment but even, you can go back a couple of months ago, two months ago, Mekon Carter was at Forward City Church again, preaching. There's a lot of people that probably have no clue who this guy really is, who he's been associated with, what he did in Washington with Mary Jones. No clue whatsoever. Do these churches inform their congregations before they invite these men in about what they've done? Of course not. If they do that, they're going to lose members and eventually they're going to lose money. It's always about the money for them. People ask, why don't these pastors just go try to find another job when they get disqualified, right? When they get, when all that's happening, because this is all they know. It's easy for them to take advantage of the sheep because they know that, again, pastor is a trusted title by default almost, and it shouldn't be. I call it out all the time. Church is a word that is trusted by default because of what it represents. But it's been so easy for the enemy to twist it for his gain. Pastors that work for him, they don't work for the Lord. But people will get mad at me and say, I'm the problem. I'm sowing discourse discouraging people from coming to Christ. No, no, no. You see, coming to Christ is not about a relationship with your pastor or a church building. It's about a relationship with you and Jesus Christ, the one who went to the cross and died for your sins. Hard truth, but it needs to be said. I want to hear from you guys on this can let me know your thoughts down below. Maybe you attend Forward City Church there in Columbia, South Carolina, and you want to give your thoughts on Mekon Carter. Uh, if you do want to see the full scope on this, the article is up right now at the Roy's Report. They do a great job of this stuff as well. JulieRoy's.com is where you will find that information from my source. Don't forget again as well, if you enjoy and appreciate my work and you would like to contribute here to my ministry to support myself and my wife in our time of need, remember you have multiple ways of doing that. One, by visiting our GoFundMe. That link can be found in the description of this video when all videos. Also by contributing to our Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash notbysightnews. That link in the description. And finally, by just hitting the super thanks button on the YT video to contribute that way. But I'll remind you again, if you choose that option, YT does take 30% of that donation. So if you wanna make sure that we get the majority of your generous gift, the best option will be either GoFundMe or Patreon. What I wanna do right now, something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing in the church, exposing the corruption of the wolves that occupy its pulpits, we always wanna give people the opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. That being said, anybody watching now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer that you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. 
What you have to do is repent of your sin. It means turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.